Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video 59. It's on using Gibbs free energy, which is essentially energy that's available to do work. So if I were to push this sphere right here, it's going to move down and it's going to move back. Where's the energy coming from? Well, that would be gravitational potential energy being converted to kinetic energy. Eventually, it comes to rest at the bottom. But if we think of this as an analogy, it really explains what's going on in a chemical or physical process. What we have is reactants and we have products. Those reactants are moving towards products, spontaneous Simultaneously, some are moving back and eventually it reaches equilibrium. What's happened to our Gibbs free energy? It's gone to zero. And so if we look at Gibbs free energy, it's a really good indicator of if we have a spontaneous reaction or a non-spontaneous reaction. So if Gibbs free energy is ever negative or less than zero, then we know that we have a spontaneous reaction. We have a scenario that looks like that where we have energy and that energy can be released. If we have a delta G greater than zero, then we have a scenario that looks something like this. We have an uphill reaction. It's not going to occur spontaneously. In other words, we're going to have to put a little bit of energy in for it to work. And then finally, we can have equilibrium in the middle. Now, in the last video, uh, we learned that the two things that really contribute to Gibbs free energy is enthalpy and entropy. In other words, those two things together can help us determine if it's a spontaneous reaction or a non-spontaneous reaction. But it doesn't answer every question. And in this video, I'm going to try to answer every question. What's missing is our temperature. In other words, T is going to be incredibly important. And so if we're trying to figure out if it's a spontaneous process or not, one of the biggest things is enthalpy or the amount of internal energy. And so if we have a delta H that's negative, that's a good indication that we're going to have a spontaneous reaction. So in a thermite reaction, our reactants have more energy than our products. It's a downhill reaction. And so we'd expect this to occur spontaneously. Likewise, if we were to rust iron, same thing. We're going to have more energy before than we do after. That energy is going to be released. That energy is going to be released into the surroundings. But sometimes you'll have exceptions to that rule. So like a cold pack, if you think about that, it occurs spontaneously, but in fact, it's actually consuming energy. And so we're going to have a delta H that's going to be a positive value. And so we can't just stick with enthalpy by itself. We have to add entropy to that. So if I had these two spheres and I had uh, gas on the left side and I just open it up, we're going to see that gas move from left to the right. So we're going to have this irreversible process. And so what's going on there? We're not changing the energy. What's really going on is entropy. And so these two things together, enthalpy and entropy, are very important in helping us figure out if this is a spontaneous process or not. So we could put it on a grid like this. And so if we ever have a decrease in enthalpy, so that's going to be an exothermic reaction, or one that increases entropy, we know immediately that's going to be a spontaneous reaction. Likewise, if we have the opposite of that, if we have an increase in enthalpy and a decrease in entropy, we know that's going to be non-spontaneous. Now, the nice thing about that is the reverse of that we can automatically figure out is going to be spontaneous. But what's going to be in these other two spots? What's going to happen, for example, when we have an endothermic process, but we're actually increasing entropy or vice versa? And so a good place to look at that is just the movement of ice to water. So if we're looking at ice and water, if we look at the molecules of ice, there's going to be a huge amount of order there. And a lot of that has to do with these hydrogen bonds. If we look in liquid water, um, it's going to be moving around. And so if we were to move from ice to water, what's that process? That's simply melting. That's going to be an increase in delta H. What does that mean? That's going to be an endothermic process. It's taking energy from its surroundings. So we're going to have a delta H that's positive. What's happening to our entropy? Our entropy is increasing. In other words, our matter is becoming more dispersed. So where would that be over here? We have an increase in enthalpy and we have also an increase in entropy. And so let's go in the opposite. Let's say that we're actually freezing that water. What's going on there? We have an exothermic reaction. So we have a decrease in enthalpy and we also have a decrease in entropy. And so this is going to be this block right here. And so in other words, if we could figure out this one slide, it would help us unlock what's in these other two grids right here. And so what do you know? Well, you know that if we take ice and we have it in an area where our temperature is greater than zero degrees Celsius, this is going to be a spontaneous reaction. In other words, if you ever take ice, 
and put it in an area where it's warmer than zero degrees Celsius, we know that ice is spontaneously going to melt. Likewise, if we take that water and put it in an area where it's less than zero degrees Celsius, then it's going to freeze. And we also know that if it's exactly at zero, we're not gonna see any change. It's gonna be non-spontaneous in either direction. So we've really answered this question right here. So if we were to look at that melting, if we ever have an increase in enthalpy, so this is a endothermic reaction, and an increase in entropy, that will be spontaneous as long as we have a high enough temperature. Likewise, if we have a decrease in enthalpy, so it's an exothermic reaction, and a decrease in uh, entropy, then that's gonna be spontaneous, but only at low temperatures. And so now we can finally come to Gibbs free energy, that equation, and hopefully it makes sense at this point. So if we're to look at Josiah Willard Gibbs equation, this is gonna be delta G on the left side. Remember, if it's ever less than zero, we know this is a spontaneous reaction or process. If it's ever greater than zero, we know that it's non-spontaneous. And so it totally makes sense, this grid right here. If you have a decrease in this number, that's a negative value. And if you have an increase in entropy, so our delta S is going up, since we're subtracting it, that's gonna give us a negative value. Likewise, if we go down to this non-spontaneous right here, what do we have? We have a delta H, which is gonna be a positive value. That's gonna make this value go up. And then our delta S, since it's negative, we're subtracting a negative, so that's gonna be a positive. And so hopefully these two make sense. But now this should unlock this, this grid right up here. So what happens if we increase our enthalpy? Well, for increasing our enthalpy, you would start to think, well, this is going to increase our delta G. But if we have a high temperature, that's going to make our entropy more important since we're subtracting that value. And so we can get away with a low enthalpy or a positive enthalpy if we have a really high temperature and, and an increase in entropy. Likewise, same thing down here. In this case, if we can have a decrease in this enthalpy, but our entropy, even though it is going down, we have a really low temperature, it's not gonna swing us as much. Now this also unlocks that whole idea of a cold pack. What's going on there? Well, we have an endothermic reaction. Again, it's taking energy from its surroundings. Our delta H is a positive value. And so why are we getting a spontaneous reaction since we have a delta H that's gonna be a positive value? Well, we're moving from ammonium nitrate into ions of ammonium and ions of nitrate. And since we're doing that, we're increasing our entropy. And so since our delta H value is gonna be so big, then we're gonna have a spontaneous reaction. We're gonna have an overall delta G that's gonna be a negative value. And so again, Gibbs free energy and that equation is really powerful because it tells us exactly what's gonna happen in that process. If it's less than zero, it's gonna be spontaneous. If it's greater than zero, it's gonna be non-spontaneous. If it's equal to zero, we're at equilibrium, and I hope that was helpful. Thank you.